But what about Al-Aqsa? How do we talk about Al-Aqsa? Allah talks about this land very specifically and talks about this masjid very specifically. Allah calls it Al-Ard Lati Barakna Fiha. The land that we have blessed from within. وَبَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ And we have blessed what is around it. Not just blessed the land itself. We have blessed what is around it as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it in the words of the prophets that came before. الْأَرْضْ الْمُقَدَّسَ The holy land. And there is something very specific about that. Imam Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah says, It is called al-muqaddasa, the holy land, because, because it is al-mutahira. It purifies you of all of your sins. When you go to that land and you pray in that land, a place where Ibn Abbas anhu said, the land of the prophets, not a single foot span. Not realize when you're watching those images of stun grenades and you're watching those images of bullets and you're watching those images of settler extremists chanting out that this is theirs and desecrating people in that land and you see that there's not a hand span there that a prophet did not stand in. Think about that. A prophet has stood in every single hand span of that land and so every part of it is holy and what they brought is even more sacred and more holy. And Musa alayhi salam, there's a reason why when he was dying, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَسَأَلَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُدْنِيَهُ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ الْمُقَدَّسَةِ رَمْيَةً بِحَجَرِ He was prohibited from it due to the actions of his people. But he asked Allah, Oh Allah, his dying wish, imagine Musa Islam's dying wish was let me die as close to it as possible. رَمْيَةً بِحَجَرِ Where I could throw a stone and it would reach that land. So if it hurts us that we are prohibited from Al-Aqsa, if it hurts those of us who are Palestinian in particular, who can't visit the land of our parents, while colonialists and their enablers can, then know that Prophet Musa السلام, the most spoken about man in the Qur'an, also was prohibited. And the Prophet السلام, said, if I were there, I would show you his grave, تحت الكثيب الأحمر, under the red dune, where Musa السلام, was granted that request to be as close to it as possible. And as Muslims, while we pray to Mecca today, and we know that this was the first Qibla of the Muslims, there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just appoint Al Ka'bah to be the Qibla in the first place. He could have done so in His glory and His majesty. But Allah wanted to honor that place, and Allah wanted to honor our Prophet. The Prophet leading the prayer towards the Qibla of Al Aqsa and leading the prayer towards the Qibla of Al Ka'bah shows that he is Imam al-Mursaleen, the Imam of the Prophets and the Messengers. It was a way of honoring our Prophet and it was a way of honoring those places. That Al-Aqsa should always remain in the hearts of the Muslims even though they pray towards Mecca. When they pray, their hearts are attached towards Al-Aqsa as well. To the point that the Sahaba who prayed towards both Qiblas, like Anas who used to say, لا يبقى ممن صلى القبلتين غيري. No one remains on the earth today who prayed towards the two Qiblas, except for me. He could have honored himself by saying, no one lives amongst those that prayed in Mecca and Medina. No one lives amongst those that accompanied the Prophet some here and there. But he mentioned it as a specific honor that I am the last person that exists on the face of the earth that pray towards both the Qibla of Al-Aqsa and towards the Qibla of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us a, a trip to both of them. Allahumma ameen. So much so that Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma used to travel from Al-Madinah to Al-Quds just to pray two rak'ahs. And we know the place of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in the heart of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And when Ibn Umar used to go to Al-Quds, he would be so afraid of losing out on any of the great reward he heard from our Prophet ﷺ that he would not even drink water there because he said he wanted the ajr of it, the reward of it to be stored for him in the hereafter. So blessed that the Prophet ﷺ said, لَمَّا فَرَغَ Sulaiman ibn Dawood مِنْ بِنَاءِ بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ سَأَلَ اللَّهَ ثَلَاثَ The Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, when Sulaiman ﷺ finished his construction, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for three things. Hukman, yusadifu hukma. He asked Allah that his judgment would agree with the judgment of Allah. So he asked Allah for rushd, for guidance in his judgment. 
وَمُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ And he asked Allah for a kingdom that would be customized, that no one else would have before him or after him, so that he could spread the word of Allah. And then he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَلَّا يَأْتِيَ هَذَا الْمَسْجِدْ أَحَدْ لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا الصَّلَاةَ فِيهِ إِلَّا خَرَجَ مِنْ ذُنُوبِهِ كَيَوْمِ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ What an amazing hadith. He asked Allah that no one comes to visit this place, the place of the prophets. No one comes to visit Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and pray in this holy land, except that they leave purified from their sins like the day that their mother gave birth to them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah gave him two. And I pray that Allah has also given him the third. And so the Sahaba had in their hearts that we go there and we pray, that we connect ourselves to that land, that we connect ourselves to the place of the prayer of the Prophets, the law of the Prophets, the way of the Prophets, that we pray our two rak'ahs there. And SubhanAllah, as I was reading this hadith, dear brothers and sisters, and I was thinking about all of the hadith about attachment to it. Right? The, the Prophet ﷺ saying, الرِّحَالُ إِلَى ثَلَاثَةِ مَسَاجِدٍ There are so many ahadith I could go over today that there is three places, three places for the Muslims that they should travel to, that they should make an effort in their entire lives to travel to, make the intention right now to go to Mecca, to go to Medina, and to go to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. The Prophet ﷺ said that's where we make the intention to travel through as believers. And you go through the reward of it, and the reward of it, and the reward of it, and the reward of a place is in two. The ulama mentioned, the wisdom that the reward of a place is in two things. Number one, the virtue of the place itself. Number two, the virtue of the struggle to get to that place. So when we think about Hajj, which has the reward of purifying us from our sins, Al Hajj al Mabrur, the day like the day that our mothers gave birth to us. It's not just the Hajj, it's the struggle of the Hajj. And it's as if Allah and the Messenger some are saying that this is a place that we will always struggle to get to and to pray in. And this is the place where the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to connect ourselves to emotionally and spiritually as much as we can and physically. If you can't get there, then at least you send some oil to light up its lamps. This is our ummah, this is our attachment to Al-Aqsa. And I was thinking about the reward of all this. You know what I thought to myself? Imagine the reward of the people that were standing there on the 27th night with grenades falling on them, serving the role of play, praying in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Also murabitun, also guarding a sacred place and not flinching as bombs were falling on them and as, and as oppressors and occupiers tried to scare them with their weapons. I, could, I can't imagine, you want to see a blessed people, a people beloved to Allah? Imagine those people that were standing there in those nights when we were seeing the footage of them. If the reward of just praying there under normal circumstances is so rewardable, what then of those brothers and sisters? What then of that brother that we saw the iconic image of Ramadan praying his salah and they are surrounding him from all directions and he looks as if they are not there because he's too focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's too focused 